Good, o- good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jonathan Lowenstein, Application Specialist with Intertechnology in Toronto. We are representing micro measurements in Canada. And uh, what I would like to do at this time is to explain a little bit, a little bit about measuring torque on shafts, whether the, the shaft is static, carrying static torque or dynamic torque in terms of rotation of a shaft in a steel mill. People, people want to measure the actual throughput of the torque, and from that, with the RPM readings of the shaft, they want to know what the power throughput of the shaft is at, in any particular application. And this is one of the standard uh, techniques of using strain gauges to, 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 me- to measure uh, real live uh, engineering units in industry. So what I want to explain, uh, there are these sheets, uh, sheets one to four, explaining uh, how we go about this. So initially, when one goes to take readings uh, on a particular piece of machinery, whether in the factory or wherever, one has to ascertain exactly what the setup of the equipment is so that you know the direction of, of twisting of the shaft when load is applied, torque is applied by a motor to the shaft to make it turn and drive something else down line. So a sketch, what I normally do is first of all make a schematic of a wheatstone bridge with four uh, strain gauges uh, completing a full wheatstone bridge for torque measurement and by drawing a pictorial of the shaft with the direction of torque shown on the axis, I can, from these sheets that you would have uh, access to, uh, on page one, I have the shaft with under torsion, and what it's doing with the torque, it's twisting the, if you draw a line parallel to the axis of the shaft on the surface, you will see that when you apply torque, you are twisting that line, offsetting the line from one end of the shaft to the other. When you apply strain gauges between the two, uh, somewhere on the shaft, you are twisting a, a, a square. If you take a square on the surface of the shaft, you are twisting it to create a, a trapezoid. So the, the sides are twisting under torque loading. So what I do is I map out where I'm going to put on the shaft in 3D. I'm I'm putting the direction of the strain configuration on the shaft. And we are using two types of strain gauges. We're using either a half bridge uh, shear gauge where the axis of the the two gauges, the the line uh, dividing the two gauges is placed along the the axis of the shaft on the surface and you one also places the same gauge diametrically opposite on the shaft on the other side to create a four gauge full wheatstone bridge circuit for torque measurement so i have what i've done is i've drawn the outline of the gauges on the shaft and i've applied strain uh, transducer terminals in between the, the gauges, at 90 degrees from one gauge on, on, the, on the surface of the shaft, I've applied terminals to complete the Wheatstone Bridge. And I've also drawn a, a development of the surface of the shaft on the, on the sheet of paper. So one can see the location of the strain gauges, where the tabs of the gauge are, and where the terminals are. We have five terminals on, uh, on the shaft to connect lead wires between the gauges and the terminals. And we have an extra, as I say, an extra terminal. Instead of having four terminals to for a full bridge, we have a fifth terminal so that we can complete the corner of the bridge by putting in high resistance wire to balance the bridge, if need be. So that's the setup that we have. And knowing exactly what is what you're faced with in the industry in terms of what they want you to measure before you even go to site the second time, what you're doing is you, you have a layout of how the gauges are going to be placed. And when you come to site, you put down your gauges and you wire it up exactly as you have it drawn on 
a piece of paper in the developed form. So the theory of torque measurement is looking, if you go to page 2, if we go to page 2, what I have here is a depiction of a shaft under torsion. We have a line drawn on the surface of, of the shaft, an axial line, and under the torsional load, on the right hand side, we, we have a clockwise uh, twisting of the shaft, and on the left hand side of the shaft, we have a count. Uh, we also have, if, you lo if you're looking on the well, if you're looking from the one side, you, you have one that is twisting in one direction, and the other on the other side, on the left hand side, we have the counter balancing torque twisting on the other side. So, effectively, we are creating a, a shear on the surface of the shaft which is distorting uh, an ideal uh, square image on the surface of the shaft. If we have a look at the image of the square on the shaft, we find that the torsion is deforming the square into a, a trapezoid so that you, you have created a shearing of the sides and we the shearing of the side is the shear strain given by gamma and it's uh, if, if one looks at the angle, the reduced angle in the corner of the square, if you subtract that from 90 degrees, the originally the square was, uh, the sides were at 90 degrees to one another, you have the total shear, which is the gamma, uh, this, the space left uh, on, on, by the axes on the corner of, of, of that square. So we've defined the twisting of the shaft, the angular twisting of the shaft on that square. So what we're going back to is some engineering formula which tells you that the shear stress uh, tor divided by the radius of the shaft is equal to the torque applied to the shaft divided by the polar momentum inertia of the shaft, which one can get from engineering uh, textbooks. And that is also equal to the modulus of rigidity, which is similar to the Young's modulus under tension and compression. The modulus of rigidity is the relationship between the shear stress and the shear strain. So the, the shear stress divided by R is also equal to the modulus of rigidity G times the angular twisting of the shaft to one end, which is actually uh, omega, uh, the, the, the twisting of the shaft, when you look at the end of the shaft, the circular shaft, you're twisting the radius by an angle of omega. And if you divide the G times omega divided by L, that is equal to the shear stress divided by R. So we have three of these formulas, one equal to the other, or three terms, one equal to the other, which relates the engineering parameters of torsion or twisting of a shaft due to torque. And this is the basis of analyzing what we are doing. What we find out by infinitesimal strain theory, theory, which is looking at the very small distortion of material due to loading, when we look at that, we find that the shear stress is equal to the modulus of rigidity times the shear strain. And that is actually equal to 2 times the modulus of rigidity times the actual strain of the strain gauge, which is actually placed for the, to detect the maximum strain on the shaft. It turns out that that is at 45 degrees to the axis of the shaft under torsion. So we are now have this formula that tells us that if we put down strain gauges, as I said, nine, uh, uh, diametrically opposed, if it's a half a bridge strain gauge with two gauges on it under shear, when you place that on the shaft, the, the gauges are sensing either tension or compression uh, on the strain gauges. So we then have 
if we use the formulas that we have here on the page, from page 2, we have that the torque is given by the shear stress divided by R, the radius of the shaft, times the polar moment of inertia. And that is equal to the formula which is given elsewhere on page 4. That is equal to the modulus of elasticity, Young's modulus, divided by R, times the polar moment of inertia, divided by 1 plus Poisson's ratio, and also times the strain on the gauge. So if we can measure the strain, and we know all the other uh, information from the material uh, properties, which is Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio, and we can find out what the polar moment of inertia is, the polar moment of inertia for a solid shaft turns out to be pi times d to the fourth divided by 32, or pi times r to the fourth divided by 2. And if you have a hollow shaft, the polar moment of inertia is, is pi divided by 32, and in brackets, the outside diameter to the fourth minus the inside diameter to the, to the fourth. So we have the formulas to work with reading the strain under shear from the strain gauge, applying it to, uh, to this formula, which will tell you what the torque in the shaft is. So uh, that's what it is. So now if we look at, if we come to, if, if, if we come to the page four, infinitesimal strain theory, it's quite complicated. It's related also to Moore's circle, to the, uh, the Moore's uh, circle of strain and the Moore's circle of stress. Uh, we, it's giving you an outline of how one actually physically determines uh, the relationship of the strain on the gauge and the shear uh, on the material, the, the shear strain on the material. And we have, uh, I, I'm not going to go into full details here, but uh, what it is telling you here is that an important fact that comes out of this is that your shear strain is equal to two times the strain gauge strain. That's the relationship that comes out of looking at the small de deformation of the square into a trapezoid. And importantly, at the bottom of page 4, you have a relationship between the Young's modulus and the modulus of rigidity, and that is that the Young's modulus is equal to 2 times the modulus of rigidity, and in brackets times 1 plus Poisson's ratio. When you look at the shear load cells, where they are using shear gauges to measure in, in, instead of bending beams, you have a parameter there which is 1 plus uh, Poisson's ratio and that is gi giving you a, a larger output that you would have that you would normally get with a tension compression load cell. So to finish off uh, I also have page well I have a page 3 and uh, page 3 is really the, the same as uh, page uh, 2 it has, I've defined on the one, there's slight difference there where I've actually put on page three. I've got the, the engineering formula at the top there, and I've also put in, in distinctly, I've put in that the shear strain is equal to two times the strain on the strain gauge, epsilon. So the, the gamma is equal to two times epsilon of the strain gauge. And you've got the other relationships that's the same as what you see uh, on page two. And the polar moment of inertia is given again. And the polar moment of inertia can be got from data, data uh, sheets in the engineering handbooks, etc. So, finally, I want to just mention that we have two types of strain gauges that we would normally use. The one we have spoken about a moment ago, which is the half bridge, two gauges in shear, diametrically opposite. We also have a full bridge uh, torsion measurement gauge, which is four gauges that are placed on a, a single backing with four gauges which are running at 45 degrees to one another and you have 
instead of four terminals at the bottom to have a complete bridge, they have five, which means that if you look at your your Wheatstone Bridge electrical schematic, you have one corner of the bridge open to give you a total of five, five terminals to solder wires to, which means that it's possible to uh, connect your... Once you've installed your strain gauges on the shaft, uh, you put a, a short piece of wire onto the the gauge, connect it to a, one of our, our portable units like the P3 strain indicator, connect it up as a full bridge, and you can then set it up and have a look at the zero offset, and using the fifth terminal there, you can bridge the fifth terminal to either one or the other uh, side of the, of, of the arms of the bridge so that when you increase the resist the, the higher resistance which would normally be uh, constantan or manganin wire you can put some solder in some extra resistance so that as you increase the resistance of the bridge you will bring the offset of the of the gauge output to zero by looking just by looking at the output digital output on the p3 of the strain offset that you, you're reading. I, I trust that this will help you understand uh, something about installing gauges on, on, on shafts for torque measurement. Thank you very much.